All right, we're going to pick up on 8.4, the second part, and we're going to start with talking about matrices and something called row echelon form and reduced row echelon form. Okay, a matrix is in row echelon form has these properties. Now, I'll show you what it looks like. Just go with it for a minute. Any rows consisting entirely of zeros occur at the bottom. For each row that does not consist entirely of zeros, the first non-zero entry is a one. It's called a leading one. For two consecutive, or I'm sorry, two successive non-zero rows, the leading one is in the higher row, is further to the left than the leading one in the lower row. Okay, what does that mean? The goal here, guys, with the matrix is to get ones along the diagonal. Okay, and es row echelon forms mean, means that you have your ones like this and that you have zeros below them. Okay, now what's above them doesn't really matter. Okay, as long as you have zero, or ones along the diagonals and zeros below it, that is what's called row echelon form. Really. Now, a matrix is, is in, in row echelon form is called reduced row echelon form. When every column has, that has a leading zero has zeros in every other position. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, it's still ones down the diagonal. Okay. And it just means that you have zeros everywhere else, above and below those ones. You can have the row of constants down here. Okay, that, that works. But it basically, you have triangles of zeros above and below your diagonal of ones. That is row, reduced row echelon form. Okay, it's <clears throat> two different sequences of ele elementary row operations may yield different row echelon form. The reduced row echelon, reduced row echelon form is unique. There's only one way to get to this. Now, you and someone else may have just done row echelon and end up with two different matrices, but you have the diagonals of ones. That's okay. If you take it further and do the reduced row echelon, there's only one right answer. Okay. Now, will it achieve the final answer the same? Yes. Don't worry too much about that. We're going to look right now at taking a matrix and putting it in row echelon form. Not the reduced one, just the basic row where you just have a diagonal of 1 and the bottom triangle of zeros. All right, so let's look at this. Um, remember, this is not unique, so yours may look different than someone else's. So my goal here, remember this, is to get all of these one. This is my answer row right here. This one I'm going to leave. Don't worry about these. But I need all of these to be ones, and I want to make this this triangle, these three values, zeros. That's what I want to do. So we're going to use those row operations to get there. So I'm going to erase those markings so we don't lose it. Now, the good news is, as I look at this, my leading row starts with the one. So I don't need to do anything at all. To that row. So I'm just going to leave it 1, 2, negative 1, and 3. Now I need this row to start with a 0. So how am I going to get that? Well, I'm going to use that leading row, that first row, to help me do that. So I'm going to take uh, row 2 and I'm going to multiply row 1 by negative 3 and see if that gets me zeros where I'm going. Alright? So let's think this through. Row 2 is 3 minus 3 times 1, which is going to be 0. 7 minus 3 times 2, which is 6. So 7 minus 6 is 1. Negative 5, negative 3 times negative 1 is plus 3. So negative 5 plus 3 gives me negative 2. 14 minus 9 gives me 5. Negative 3 times 3 is plus 9. Okay. All right, so that achieved what I wanted, okay? It gave me the second one, and it gave me the beginning of my triangle as a zero. Let's do this bottom row. Again, I'm going to use that row one to help me out. So I'm going to take row three, and I want to multiply it by whatever I need to to get negative two to zero. So I'm going to add a positive two. Okay, I need a positive two here. So negative two plus two is zero. Negative one, so what's going on? Negative one plus 4 gives me 3. Negative 3 minus 2, negative 5. And then 
happens here? 8 plus 6 gives me 14. All right, so I'm not there yet, right? I have part of it, but I don't have all of it. So what do I want to do now? I need to make this term a 0 and get this one ultimately to 1. But right now, all I'm going to focus on is this step, making that 3 a 0. So I'm going to use row 2 because I have a 0 in that first position and the on both those rows. I want to use those two so they don't mess each other up. So I'm going to leave row one alone. I'm going to leave row two alone. Okay, It has things where I need them to be. Now row three. What am I going to do in row three? I'm going to take row three and I'm going to use row two to operate on it and clean it up. So I need to get negative three times of row one to make that three disappear. So I'm going to subtract, I mean row two, sorry. Two. So let's see what happens here. So if I take the first term, 0 minus 0 gives me 0. Good. We needed that. The second term, 3 minus negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. That gives me a 0. That's what I wanted. The next term, negative 5 minus 3 times negative 2. Mm, let's see, negative 5 plus 6 gives me a positive 1. It's 4. And then 14 minus 3 times 5. So that's 14 minus 15 gives me negative 1. All right, look, we got what we wanted. We got our bottom triangle of zeros and we got the diagonal of ones. Okay. That is in reduce, that's not reduced, that is row echelon form. Okay. Row echelon form. It takes some working, takes some practice, but you can do it. Now, you're going to have to be able to do that by hand. All right, I'm going to show you some tricks on the calculator, but I need you to be able to do this by hand as well. Now, the method of elimination can then be applied to a system of linear equations in more than two variables. When elimination is used to solve a system of linear equations, the goal is to rewrite the system in a form to which back substitution can be applied. All right, so consider these two systems linear equations, okay? Here's a system of three variables, x, y, and z, and it's equivalent to this guy. When all they've done is take the matrix and reduced it to this guy. All right, they took this matrix, which was 1, negative 2, 3, and 9, negative 1, 3, 1, negative 2, 2, negative 5, 5, and 17. And they've done, you know, the operations we've talked about to get it to reduced form, right? So look how much simpler it became. This is like, this is the ones, right? This is the diagonal of ones, and there's zeros in all these locations. So what's beautiful about this is, look, you've got a Z. You know what Z is right here, okay? Once you know Z, then you can plug that value of Z into this equation and solve for Y. Once you know Z and you know Y, you can plug those values into this one and solve for X. That's what we mean by back substitution, all right? So then it says Gaussian elimination of back substitution. That is exactly what we just talked about. Use Gaussian elimination to solve the system equations. Use the matrix version of Gaussian elimination. The basic difference between the two methods is that the matrices you do not need to keep writing the variables, okay? That's what we've been doing. So we're going to fit, we're going to go start, start to finish. Okay, our goal is to take the linear system and we have our augmented matrix. So what do we need to do? We need to make it in row echelon form and then we're going to back substitute. All right, let's just take this in steps and do this, all right? So what do I need? I need diagonals of ones, okay? So looking right here, I'm going to leave my top row just like it is because I already have a leading one where I want it. Now, look, if I add row 1 and row 2, this becomes a 0 right here. And that's what I want. So all I'm going to do is row 1 or row 2 plus row 1. Okay, that's all I'm doing right here. If I add them, I get 0. 3 minus 2 is 1, it's 4. 3 plus 3 plus 1 is 4, dot, dot, dot. And then negative 2 plus 9 is 7. Done. All right, we're on our way. All right, I need to get a zero down in this bottom row, so I need to multiply. I'm going to take row three, and I'm going to multiply row one 
by negative 2 and see what happens. So if I do that, I get uh, 0. So 2 minus 2 gives me 0. That's good. Then I have negative 5 minus 2 times row 1. Well, that's a 4. I mean, negative 5 plus 4. That gives me negative 1. And then I'll have 5 minus 2 times 3. Well, that's 6. So 5 minus 6 gives me negative 1. And then 17 minus 2 times 9, that's going to be 17 minus 18. That gives me negative 1. Okay, we're not there yet, but we're getting closer. So I have 1, negative 2, 3, and 9. 0, 1, 4, 7. I'm just rewriting. 0, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. Now, not quite there. I need this term right here to be a 0. Well, hopefully you can see that if I just add row 2 and row 3, I'll get there. All right, so I'm going to get 1, negative 2, 3, 9, 0, 1, 4, 7, 0. Now I start adding them. 0, 4 minus 1 is 3, 7 minus 1 is 6. All right, fabulous. Now, what I've done is I've got it in reduced form. And I can use this to help me solve. So remember, this is x, this is y, this is z. So if I start from my bottom row, what do I have? I have 3z equals 6. Well, I can solve that. z is equal to 2. Then I take that value for z and I put it in the middle equation. What does the middle equation tell me? It tells me that y plus 4z is equal to 7. Okay, well, I know that z is 2. So y plus 4 times 2 equals 7, so y plus 8 is 7, that means y is negative 1. All right. So now I know two of my variables, z and y. Then I can back substitute again, go to the very beginning equation. It says x minus 2y plus 3z equals 9. I already know y and z, so let's solve it for x. So x minus 2 times negative 1 plus 3 times 2 equals 9. So that's x plus 2 plus 6 equals 9. x plus 8 equals 9. So x is equal to 1. So I write it as a point. Three, if you just do x, y, z. So the 1, negative 1, and 2. Oops, that's positive 2. All right? So we reduce our matrices so that we can solve using back substitution. All right, so we're going to look at the, look at these augmented matrices. And the beautiful thing about these is that they're already in reduced echelon form. So we're just going to practice the idea of back substitution. So it says use the variables of x, y, and z if applicable. So remember what the dots mean. The dots are those equal signs. So this is x and this is y. If you had a third variable, it would be z. Okay. So what we're going to do is rewrite these with our variables in it. So it's going to be x minus 2y equals 4, and then y equals negative 3. All right, so I've solved already. I have y is negative 3. So I'm going to plug that back in to the first equation. So x minus 2 times negative 3 equals 4. So that's x plus 6 equals 4. Subtract 6 x is equal to negative 2. So my solution is negative 2, negative 3. That's what back substitution does for you. All right, look at example 2. I have three variables, x, y, and z. All right, so I have x minus y plus 4z equals 0. I have y minus z equals 2. And then I have z equals negative 2. All right, so I back substitute. I know z is negative 2, so I do y minus a negative 2 equals 2. So negative 2 times uh, negative is plus 2 equals 2. So if I subtract, y is 0. Then I use my first equation. So I have x minus 0 plus 4 times negative 2 equals 0. That's x 
minus 8 equals 0, so x is equal to 8. Now, how do I write my answer? It's a coordinate, it just has three parts, so I would do x, then y, then z. Okay. So you can see, once you get them in echelon form, row echelon form, it's really pretty easy to solve these. Alright, look at this guy, really quick and easy, x and y. This is x equals 7, y equals negative 5. So write my answer, 7, comma, negative 5. And you're done. So x, y, z. This one, notice, is in reduced row echelon form. The top triangle, bottom triangle. It's beautiful because you don't have to do any back substitution. It's already solved. So you have x equals negative 4, y equals negative 8, and z equals 2. Done. Negative 4, negative 8, and 2. All right? Easy to use once you've got re the reduced row echelon form. Super easy. Now, using the matrices and the graphing calculator to solve the system equations, we're going to use reduced row echelon form. All right? Now, you're going to love this because I'm going to show you how to use the calculator to reduce those rows for you. So the first thing you're going to want to do is rewrite these as a matrix, okay? 1, 2, so I've got 7, and then 2, 1, 8, okay? You can do your row operations if you so wish, or you can just follow the steps I'm going to show you on the calculator. All right, on your calculator, you need to pay attention. Look at the little blue letters right there underneath the word map. See how it says matrix? Okay, so you're going to go second and inverse, and that gives me the matrix menu. The first thing I want to do, I'm going to write my steps down for you. You need to write them down too. Matrix to edit. Okay, and then you put in the dimensions that you want. Okay, so I'll come back to my calculator. I want to edit A, so I go over to edit, select matrix A. And it's asking you, what's the dimensions? Well, look at it. It's a 2 by 3. 2 and then 3. Okay. And then I'm going to enter my values. 1, enter, 2, enter, 7, enter, 2, enter, 1, enter, 8. Okay. So that's in there. So I get out, quit. And then I want to go back to matrix, the so second matrix. And I'm going to go over to math. And these are all functions we can do with matrices. What you need to focus on is you're going to go down to um, number or letter B. Right there, reduced row echelon form. That's what that stands for. So I'm going to click on that, B. And then I need to select the matrix. So I go second matrix and select A, a enter. But, and there's my reduced echelon form of that matrix. Without having to figure out the operations, it'll do it for you. So let me write this down. So I put in my dimensions, then I fill matrix, fill matrix, then um, back to matrix menu, go to math, and then you go to option B, reduce row echelon form, All right? And then choose your matrix. So what is this telling you? Well, this tells me that x is equal to 3, y is equal to 2, and I've solved my matrix. So when you use your calculator to do this, you have to show me this part as well. Okay? Show me the reduced matrix, and then show me your answer. Sorry, that should be fine. So let's try another example. Let's put this in our augmented matrix form. Okay, if I put this in my calculator, I'm going to go back out to math and edit, change my dimensions because this one is a 3 by 4. Out, math, B. So I need to quit. There it is. So there's my reduced row, row, reduced row echelon form. So x is negative 19, y is negative 5, z is 6. So negative 19, negative 5, 6. So I want to 
bring you back for a moment to our words of consistent and inconsistent. So this has a solution, right? That means it is consistent. Okay, this example one over here has a solution, so it is consistent. Now, sometimes you're going to run into one that doesn't have a solution. I'm going to show you what it looks like in reduced row echelon form. Make our matrix. Okay, so I've put in my new matrix. I'm going to reduce row echelon form of A, and here it is. Again, X is 1.81. Y is negative 1.06, and Z is 2.13. So I can write it as a three-dimensional point. All right. Example. Do the calculator at home. Feel free to try it. Larger ones. We've got to be grateful that we don't have to uh, do matrix operation, row operations on So when I put this last one in the calculator, this is what it popped out for my reduced form. So I can see what X, Y, W, or Z and W all are. Okay, so uh, it's 0.53, negative 0.58, 3.23, and 2.82. Now, there's my solution. So all of these are consistent systems because they have a solution. So I just kind of want to bring to your attention what it might look like if it was inconsistent, all right? And it would look something like this. So an inconsistent system would come out something like this. Like you'd have, it would look, you know, pretty normal until you got something like this. So, you know, this is X, this is Y, this is Z. Well, okay, you're thinking, great, X is 3, Y is 2, Z is 5. No, it's not, because look, this is saying 0 Z's is equal to 5. That's not possible. 0 times Z equals 5. That's not true. So what that means is that this is an inconsistent system. All right, so be careful. Be really, really careful. If you have a 0 in there for a variable, but you have a value over here on the equal side, that's where you're going to have an inconsistent system or a no solution, if you will. All right? So just be really careful about that because sometimes that does show up in reduced echelon form. But you just need to be able to recognize that that's an inconsistent system and there's no solution for it. All right? I know it's a lot. We'll practice this in class and we'll see you there.